what I've done here is I've, I've created a very wide variety of websites for us to look at together. Uh, I wanted to make sure there it is just a majorly huge variety. So number one is Modern Castle. Now Modern Castle is a what I consider to be an extremely good example of a review based website. So what they've focused on specifically is home smart home products with a kind of a few main categories. And these are their silos. If you know anything about SEO and the SEO silos, which I teach in other videos, vacuums, vacuum reviews, air purifiers, furniture, smart home products, and mops. That's it. That's really what they focused on. They focused on these areas of business. Now, what they do, and when you go down, you, you roll down immediately, you can see right away, this is what makes them different. This is their differentiation, is that they actually buy the individual products. They have room or rooms dedicated in their house to, they, they spill shit on the ground and then they clean it up. And like, how good did this vacuum clean up all that stuff we spilled on the ground, right? And there's a lot of people who think the game of affiliate marketing is, how do I get people to click on my links? And that's the, like, how do I just get some, if I can only get somebody to click on my links. Like they want to buy this thing. They should just click on my link. And it's like, no, how do you add value to the lives of the people considering buying a, I don't know, $450 vacuum or something like that? How do you add value to the lives of these individuals? Well, you do these types of reviews. So I think modern castle for people who are doing Amazon review sites, for people who are focused on just flat out reviewing products. Um, I think this is one of the best websites to study, one of the best websites to model. And that's really what you're going to need to do is you need to find leaders who are doing similar things to what you want to do, potentially in different niches, figure out what they're doing that's getting them the success that you desire to emulate and then go do those things, right? You can see here, these are all like all of these are just different affiliate links here, but it's the way that they've built out their site with all of the different pieces of content that talks about what are the smart thermostats? What is a smart home? Like all of the bits and pieces. If you look on the right, you see how long this, this page is. So this is their best smart home devices. And like you could scroll down, like they just go through all of the different smart products. So this is a smart home reviews. And then this takes you into the smart locks, which links you directly to their best smart lock. And what they've done is NerdWallet did this, uh, NerdWallet got bought out by a big company. They become a trusted reviewer. Their audience who has read their reviews, bought their other products, when you're ready to get your next smart home thing, whether it's a thermostat or a smart speaker, and you're like, you know what? I trusted them. I bought what they recommended. It worked really well. I'm going back to moderncastle.com to find out which smart speaker they think is actually the best speaker. And then you go into the reviews and that's how it works in this situation. Now, I personally like businesses that are a little bit more fun. And when I say a little bit more fun, I don't know if that guy's actually passionate about vacuum cleaners. I don't know if he's actually passionate about smart home devices. I think you get smart homes, people can get geeky and they, they love having that stuff. But this is a brilliant example. So this is dad's guide to W dw.com and wdw stands for walt disney world now a little bit about his story he was an air traffic controller who loved disney now air traffic controllers kind of like pilots they don't let them work past 55 because it's such a high stress job uh so he the whole time was thinking about what's his next thing going to be he always loved disney he ever since he was a kid he loved disney content and he loved the walt disney story so he knew it wanted to be around disney and what did he do after that he went in and became a disney travel agent he actually studied, he bought courses, he went in and became an actual travel agent for Disney, but he didn't love that side of selling. He just wanted to share what he loved about Disney World. Well, this guy is incredibly successful. This website is incredibly successful and 100% about this, and you can see right here, I love Disney World. It's my favorite place anywhere. So Carl has built himself a business around this thing that he absolutely loves. And we're gonna look a little bit into it, but he's got books, he's got products, and the whole idea is that there's families who might travel from around the world or around the country to Walt Disney World. He knows so much about Walt Disney World that he's gonna help these individuals who are trying to plan their trip to get the most out of their trip. If you're spending $2,500 or $5,000 or $7,000 to take the family to Walt Disney World, you're probably going to do a little bit of research in order to maximize that time and investment while you're there. It's a big place. What are you going to do? Well, he's got all of the different pieces about the different 
components of it, right? The, the My Disney experience, the transportation, where to stay, what resorts to stay at, is it worth it, et cetera, trips and info. And then he actually has travel agencies. He's got different affiliate things built in. He's got his own book at this point that sells. Uh, so let's go into one of the, and, and one of the things to notice is with all these drop downs, this is a content heavy website. And that's the other thing you're gonna notice a lot of times with all these kinds of websites is content is what wins. Because get into the mindset of that person who's about to take their family to Walt Disney World. The whole week before they fly out, they can't, they're, they're trying to think about work. They're sitting in their cubicle all week and they're really thinking about their vacation. They've already kind of checked out even though they're at the office because they have to be, right? So what are they doing? Well, they're alt tab reading this stuff. They're, they're Googling things like how to deal with crowds at Walt Disney World and they might find this post and they might find this book and they might find his other stuff and they might take his recommendations and they might actually purchase through his affiliate links and that's where he makes his money. But I'm just scrolling down to show you all of the different bits and pieces, all the content that's in here. You can see that it he links to the other stories that he's got, he links, there's a lot of internal linking going on. This is just pretty much decent or good SEO right here is what he's doing. You can see he's got a partnership with a top Disney World planning. So he's either selling leads or he's getting paid referrals when they actually book as an affiliate. So there's, there's ways to monetize this. He knew he wanted to create something around something he loved. One of my kind of favorite ideas about this or one of the coolest things about this type of a niche is this dude gets to go to Disney World over and over somewhere he loves to be and he gets to go to the different restaurants to the different resorts he gets to stay in the resorts and review them and it's 100% tax deductible because this is his business I think it's a pretty special thing to do he's got a really big audience he's got 85,000 people connected with on on Facebook um, I know I think he does YouTube videos as well and he just reviews all of the different things like this is to me the epitome of a lifestyle business and that's why i started with modern castle to contrast that with this what i would think is a much more fun business that's more passion driven um and did he know that walt disney world was his passion well sure he loved disney all along did he realize he could build this business out of it of course not that's why he started by going and getting actual training, learning to become a uh, travel agent for Disney, he learned what he thought was right. And then he just started building content, building content. He grew his audience. He built it out to the point where now he literally has one of the best audiences in this site gets an incredible amount of traffic. Um, I've got some ad blockers on. So that was a redirect to an affiliate link right there is what that was. And my ad blocker said that won't work. So that's number two. Let's move on to number three. I'm going to keep this going for us. And I'm going to try to keep, uh, I'm going to honor your time with this. So number three is the hand tool school. So in this one, we could talk about the overlapping. It's woodworking with hand tools, right? It's not just woodworking. It's not just the big belt saw or whatever. I don't know. I don't even know anything about woodworking. So it's not, it's not about table saws and, and, and routers. It's about literally doing it by hands. And what I find to be really interesting is he's very upfront about the hard way makes you a better woodworker. Um, I've been really upfront in my channel and my platform here about like, you know, building a business online takes years and years and years of work. I like that he's honoring that right up front. Now, what I'm going to show you here is, so he is selling courses and projects and plans. So what he calls them is semesters, kind of like college, right? So the first semester is orientation of the tools, 125 bucks for this digital course. It's just a video course, 175 bucks for this course, 125 bucks for that course, 125 bucks for that course, 125, 125, how to build a bed or a whole bedroom uh, suite, as he calls it, 175 bucks for the plans on how to do that. Um, I think this is some sort of coaching, uh, hourly coaching for 30 bucks an hour. And then he's got other products. These are individually priced between 80 and what $60. Then he's got individual lessons, how to use specific tools. These are $10 products. Okay. So what I want to show you is this is his product and it lives on a separate site. Now he is building out content in two places. Number one, I'm holding control and clicking on top. The Renaissance woodworker is where he's publishing actual kind of um, written content. One other super, super important thing. Beautiful websites don't always work. They might look good. You might look at a site and be like, wow, that site is pretty. I can tell you 100% truthfully, ugly sites can work really, really, really well. And you're going to see some ugly sites on this tour day successful sites we're going on today. So just know that, that allow yourself to not prejudge the content and their success by the layout itself. So from here, you can see just tons of content. He's got kind of a Pinterest type layout on this, but these are all the free pieces of content that actually attract people from the search engines. Then you 
you click on hand tool, tool school, that's we, how we get back to his other site where he's selling everything. The last place I want to show you, oops, I didn't want to go to his Instagram. I hope that doesn't open. Um, I want to go to his YouTube channel because it lends itself to YouTube to grow his audience. So he's doing the whole kind of, um, why is that not opening for me right now? So he's got 3.5 million views on YouTube. I checked it out earlier that this isn't actually working. It might be my ad blocker that's blocking it. So he's got 3.5 million views on his YouTube. He started, he made his first YouTube video nine years ago. So this guy has been putting out YouTube videos for nine years on how to build these things. Then he started putting out blog posts. I don't know how, when the earliest blog post was, but he put out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of blog posts on how to build this thing and how to use this tool all things around his little overlap, woodworking with hand tools. So he's been putting in the work for nine years and now he has a very successful business built around selling these courses, right? So people will find his content, whether it's on YouTube, how do I use a planer is something they might look up. They find his content like, wow, this is really good. They follow a link to his main site. They read more They're like, man, this guy knows what he's doing. I might as well just buy one of his courses to get oriented with all of the tools. Or I'd really like to build that bedroom thing. I don't exactly have the right plans for that. I'm just gonna buy his course. And this dude has created a lucrative business teaching people, helping people kind of master what he loves to do. This guy obviously loves spending time in his shop, working with wood with his hand tools. Bingo, he found that intersection. And then I wanna remind you, nine years of publishing videos to get 3.5 million views. The dude's working his butt off. Every video is about either using a tool itself or it's about how to make a specific thing. So he's in his shop using tools, documenting how to use the tool. He's in his shop building things, documenting how to build the things. Sometimes he gives it away for free to attract the audience. Other times when they're these big complex projects and when they're, they're neat and orderly, he puts more time into it, he sells it as an actual course. And on here, I guarantee you there's a, a place and it's probably on his other site, he's probably making affiliate revenue from actually selling, uh, recommending the exact tools that he uses. He probably doesn't sell his own physical tools. Um, he probably actually recommends tools over on Amazon, et cetera, et cetera, and gets affiliate income in addition to. Moving along, I love this one. And I use this example um, in the little Venn diagram that I showed you at the beginning. I'm gonna check in with you guys on the comments real quick. I just wanna make sure everything's going good. If you're enjoying this, say yes. Give me a comment below. Um, where are your comments? Where'd you guys go here? Make sure we're all tracking together here. Cool, um, Lincoln, so uh, it's not a booking site. So Lincoln Vo said in the comments, Epic content, he's been trying to figure out how to create a booking site for Hawaii. I have a travel specific site on the list here. It's about an, uh, a Caribbean island. It's about how a girl created content on that situation. Um, and boom, all right, everybody's rocking. So Lydia, I appreciate your kind words. Hard to be passionate about mops. Null Zero, you're totally right. I got a mop story for you. Um, I was looking to buy a mop. I'm standing in, in Home Depot, literally staring at a wall of mops, no idea. And this lady comes up, little Latina lady here in Flagstaff, and she was like, yo, like I'm a, I'm a, I clean floors. Like what kind of floors do you have? And I was like, I got hardwood floors. She was like, okay, like I clean professionally all day, every day. Like this mop changed my life. And she was so stoked on this like $40 mop that had like a foot pedal spinner thing. I bought the $40 mop. I was looking at the $4 mops and she was like, I cleaned, like she was stoked on mops and literally it made the sale. If she was an affiliate, I, she would have made a commission in that moment. And that is an honest to God story that happened. I still, and the mops freaking great. Like it actually, it, it dries itself. It works really well on the hardwood floors, which I think is super cool. Um, Cool. So Angelique enjoys how I'm breaking down how to niche down the intersection of concepts. Cool. I'm glad that made sense. Um, Johan, when is it too late to change niche? You know, just think of it as an evolution, right? Like what my wife and I are doing, it's different than what she started doing, right? Like everything's an evolution. So if you make your approach in a direction of the world that you're interested in, right? You're, you're creating content on something you're interested in. Like for example, the woodworking guy is interested in woodworking. That's why he started making content on woodworking woodworking and you keep going in that direction, he, it evolves from there. So, so allow it to be an evolution. Don't be rigid in your thinking, be flexible in your thinking. Um, seems like everything's going on. Great. Sounds great. Cool. Long time. No see Nikita. Yeah. I've been traveling. I was down in Mexico, getting sunburnt, hanging out, drinking all kinds of great 
agua mineral and aguas frescas and eating eating vegan tacos and oh man i love mexico putting on an event on down there so if you want to join an event next year i'm going to put an event on down in mexico it's gonna be really freaking badass um at an all-inclusive resort and it's gonna be when it's super cold here in north america and in europe so we can all go warm up next February and learn us some stuff together and have some fun. All right, we're back to it. iPhone photography school. This is the overlap between iPhone and photography. Now, I would go to assume that uh, I don't know how many of you guys are on here. Let's see if I can see. So we've got a, a fair number of you on here. I would go to assume that 50% of you guys have iPhones on you. You might even have three iPhones within your family and everybody's got, you know, it's the, the best camera is the camera you have on you at the time you need to make the shot. So this website is doing extremely well and it is all about iPhone photography. Now he is actually selling a course. I'm going to, I'm going to pull that up. So, and I don't think you can find it from the homepage. So First thing I want you to look at is right here, and this is just iPhonePhotographySchool.com. If you can't read that up top, so he's got the start here, but they've got the big opt-in up top. But really, these tutorials. Now you're going to see that these tutorials are big tutorials. They're very, very good tutorials. So we're going to go into the tutorials and kind of go down. Like, did you notice how much my scroller? cinched up here on the top right like this is a mass you can see there's a table of contents in here there's so much content so this is to put perspective on the type of and the amount of content required to actually attract the audience that you want to work with like this is super detailed stuff look at all of the the before and after the amount of time that goes into creating this kind this is not a blog post in an afternoon this is like a 40 hour plus maybe even 60 hour of work blog post They've got their opt-in here. They've got their different reports and things that they're they're trying to get the opt-ins over here on the right. I'm still scrolling. Like so, this is the depth of the tutorials. Now, remember, I clicked on the tutorial tab on just one segment and look at. So that's that's one. That was the one we just looked at. Ten iPhone camera settings every photographer should use. This is another one just like that right this is just as long so this is the next tutorial that's just as long this is the next tutorial that's just as long we're at four five tutorials six tutorials seven eight nine ten okay three pages 30 different tutorials on one segment right so i'm gonna click on photo editing to, to help you understand so these are essentially their tops of their silos they've got the tutorials they've got six different categories of tutorials that first one we looked at had at least 30 posts this one has one two three four five six seven eight am i in the same one nine ten now full editing eight pages 10 tutorials that's 80 different tutorials and let's just grab this last one to do a random sampling how long is this tutorial the first thing you do is you look over at the right on the top tab this is another like look at this is the freaking table of contents like this is this is this is all the content that's in this one post and they have 80 posts like this do you, are you getting the amount of effort so this guy clearly loves photography probably had a basic understanding of ISO and, and all of the bits and pieces of old school photography, then learned how to kind of replicate that and do that all from their actual kind of phone itself. And I mean, I'm still just scrolling down and this is just technical, great how to stuff. It builds the trust. It builds the relationship. It builds that like, wow, this person is clearly the expert. This person is clearly the guy I want to study under, you get to the bottom, click here to find more about the iPhone Editing Academy, improve your iPhone photos. So he has an editing academy, a specific product detailed for everything in that one editing category. So every editing, 80 different amazing posts that all rank, all bring in traffic, each of those go to an editing specific product. Whereas the iPhone camera will all go to an iPhone specific product. And then just to show you real quick, um, I'm going to have to Google this. So give me one second. It's going to be iPhone photography school. Um, and then it was um, photography academy. I think it was called so his, his sales page for this. Isn't uh, easy to find. It's it's um, right there. IPA. So it's forward slash IPA is what it is. Um, the iPhone photo academy. Um, I want you to see the sales page, right? Because so many people try to go over the top of their sales pages and they don't follow a copywriting framework. If you're selling your own courses, you have to learn the art of copy. This is a great example. Embrace the creative side of your personality, how you too can take incredible iPhone photos that everyone adores and that you'll be proud of, right? So you get 
adoration from others and pride is what he's actually selling in this headline. It is such a good freaking headline to look at years later, right? So pictures you'll take on your phone that you're going to love without, here's the big problem, ever carrying a bulky camera. Then look at this sales page. It's a very simple sales page. He has a little more imagery than I do. Nothing fancy going on. If you want to study great copy, look how long this sales page is. He's taking the reader on a journey. Now here's where he made the offer. It's a $97 course here. He's got a bunch of other courses and stuff. Then they go into the testimonials and more of what you get and the different modules, exactly what you get in it and stuff. So, so this guy took it well beyond an affiliate site into some Thing, but merging that iPhone and photography, absolutely crushing it. It's been doing it for a long time. It's been working on the site for a very long time, but absolutely crushing it. Next up. So this is how to start an LLC.com. I met this guy. His name is Bobby. Um, I met him at the affiliate summit. I was just at in Vegas. I don't know if you caught that story. I was in Vegas, hanging out with Neil Patel, learning, get my study on about affiliate marketing. I just literally sat down for breakfast. We had the VIP breakfast together and this dude comes popping up. I'm like, what do you do, man? He's like, well, I run this, um, this Truick company and we, we teach, we do digital marketing and teaching. I'm like, oh, that's cool. What, what kind of sites do you have? And he told me about this site, how to start an LLC.com. Now this site started because he was starting an LLC for another business. It was a different business idea that he's not operating anymore. And this is where, when, when I got that question in the comments of like, well, well, how do you know when to adapt your niche? This is the process of adapting in action. So as he was starting his LLC, he was looking for information and he didn't feel like he found online any good information. He felt like it was all kind of just pushing like these weird services or lawyers and there was just gaps in the information, but yet it's actually a relatively simple process. So what he did is he documented the process of starting his LLC for his other business on this website, how to start an LLC. Now it ranks like an absolute behemoth. And if you go to it, it's probably actually gonna automatically pull up your state, but it's based on every individual state. So if you're in Mississippi, for example, there you go, you click, let's get started. And this is probably the landing page similar to what you'll see based on your state because it's gonna pull your IP. I just got some goofy stuff running that, that tries to block that stuff. Okay, now his business model, just so you know, right here, it's, it's displayed perfectly. Read our free guide to forming an LLC. He gives you 100% of the information of how to do it yourself for free. So if you're bootstrapped, if you don't have much money and you have a fair amount of time and you want to start an LLC, you go to this website, you follow along and you just do it and it's done. There might be an affiliate link in here or two for like a pre-made document package, right? That, that eventually you kind of need certain documents, whether it's um, if you're doing a, an S corp, you need like articles of incorporation or these kinds of things. And it's, it's just saves hundreds of um, dozens of hours if you just run off templates. So the other option is you can hire a professional. Now these are affiliate links right here. This is, you can see, if you see on the bottom of my URL, this is a share a sale link, which is an affiliate network. This is a PNTRA. That's, that's their internal uh, affiliate network. And then we're going to go down and, and here it is step by step. Like he, he tells you everything to do, right? And this ranks, if you just Google how to start an LLC, which gets searched a ton, this site ranks really, really well. So he's taking an experience he went through, right? He created a result for himself that he needed to get his business going. Then he documented it in extreme detail, right? Then he is now documented it over 50 times because it's different in every single state. And he's had his team of researchers actually research that out and write it out for every single state. It's 100% correct for each and every state. Then it even goes into legal forms, taxes, and there's other components that, that he's been able to build off of it since he had that little win. But it literally, the, the, I'm just going to document how to start an LLC for me and anybody else who's searching became the business. Whereas he did that to start a totally different business. And this is how things just happen. And now again, he's putting out the best quality information. This is all like, this is very, like, this is the real information. This is exactly how to do it. There's nothing missing. There's no hype. There's no uh, bait and switch. There's no point where it's like, okay, now pay to get the rest of this. Like, oh, this page is locked. This is gated. Or there's no click on the back and it redirects somewhere. There's no scammy bullshit going on here. He's actually giving the goods. He's actually giving you what you're looking for. Surprise, it's actually working. Oh, okay, cool. And that's a big pattern that you're going to notice in successful people. Just like that tutorial on that iPhone website, he actually told you what you wanted to know in that post in such a detailed way. You get to the end, you're like, man, I, I would love to learn more from this guy. He obviously knows everything about iPhone photography, right? That it's that approach to the game that's working yet again here. 
And there's a lot of people who they've got uh, a real estate investor is a really good example. So every other house that you buy, you want to put it in a separate LLC. You don't want to have all of your, if you've got 10 houses sitting in one LLC and somebody slips and falls in one of the houses, they can sue you and, and pretty much take your other houses or whatever equity you had in your other houses. But real estate investors will leverage one LLC for every two houses or sometimes one LLC per house. That way they're all separated and isolated. So this real estate investor might need to go in and crank out three, four, five LLCs over the course of a couple of years because they're buying two houses a quarter. Right. So that in that situation, that person is just going to come right back here. They're going to click on it. They're going to buy their thing. They want somebody else to do it because they're busy doing the deal. Whereas, you know, you and I might be like, I don't really want to spend $300 on it. I'm just going to go ahead and do it myself. Right. So it works for both. If they choose your own adventure, you want the free path. Cool. Here it is done. Right. You want the paid path and save a bunch of time. Cool. Here's who we recommend working like a champ. Met him, really cool guy. Okay, next up on this one. So vegancoach.com. Now, I'm. there's a lot of people who go into the nutrition world. Veganism, if you look at it on Google Trends, is absolutely trending. Even vegan pet food for those pet food haters who don't like rabbits who eat vegan food anyways. Um, there, there's. It's trending. It's all trending up right now. So it's, it's a very common niche. But everyone is trying to just be in the vegan niche, right? Like that's, oh, I'm just, I'm the vegan guy, but you can't do that. You gotta go deeper. So her bit, which I think is really, really interesting is how to cook vegan meals without recipes. She calls it freestyling it, right? And that's one of the problems. So if you think about, okay, I want to eat a plant-based diet. Now I have the challenge of, well, what do I cook? What do I buy? What do I do? I need all these specific ingredients. And, and this recipe calls for that little thing that I don't have her bit is the whole world of eating clean gets easy when you learn how to just kind of freestyle it and adapt and work with what you have. So all of her content is based on that. So her two circles is veganism. And then the other circle is without recipes, right? It's just being a cook. It's being able to be an adaptive cook. Now up top, you'll notice all of her content all of her con vegan basics, right? So starts with the basics, all of the different pieces. She's got best books, which is obviously the affiliate content there. Freestyle cooking, how to go recipe free that's getting into her book. All of these are, you know, guides. And I'm going to click through so you can see some of the different guides. She's got the ultimate guide to vegan cooking. Is this open right? Yeah. So here's the different pieces of the puzzle. Step two, she's got her opt-ins in. And, you know, like I wouldn't necessarily go with this background color personally. I, there's, there's other things I would do for the look of this but it's working for her, which is crazy. Now, this is the part I want to show you. So A, she's got different cooking lessons to show all the bits and pieces. So these four tabs, first four tabs, are what attract people, right? These are the information-based content that are just flat out how-to. People are searching, like, what are vegan? what's a vegan cooking guide? What kitchen tools do I need as a vegan? Or like, uh, how to cook beans. These are keyword phrases people are searching and they will find her specific posts on that. But then they're like, wow, this was really helpful. Need some help. Well, this is where you see that she's got courses. She's got one-on-one -on -one coaching. She's got meal plans. She's got course coaching, etc. So she's selling individual courses. And some of them were like, I was looking one was like $179 for, for, a. uh, uh an actual course. So here you can see it's a proper sales page, just like, you know, you've seen before, like these aren't pretty sales pages, but they take the reader on a journey emotionally to help them get ready to buy a thing. So this site has affiliate products. So this is a 197 course on how to cook sauces. Like that's incredible. I think that's a, a, a huge price point, but here's the thing as a vegan, when you learn how to make some sauces based on whatever you've got laying around, you are a weaponized individual in the kitchen, right? Like, like knowing how to make some dope sauces this is how you make meals like, mm-hmm. And that's what you want to do as a plant-based person is when you're, you know, your omni omnivorous friends come over, you want to cook food that makes them super happy. Uh, let's look, uh, learn the basics, right? So the basics of cooking vegan, I want to see what the price point is on this. Um, doesn't show me 297 literally. So the fundamentals, which she's obviously trying to make them fun. This is a 297 course on the fundamentals of cooking as a vegan. Now, if you're selling a 297 course, how many courses per month do you need to sell to hit 10 grand? Well, let's use our little calculator here. $10,000 divided by 297 equals 
33. So that's about one a day. So if she's selling one of these a day, she's making over 10 grand a month on this site. And the odds are like, I've looked at her traffic, her traffic, it, it might be a seasonal low right now, but her traffic's down a little bit right now, but she still gets really good traffic. This site is actually, uh, it's a, it's a pretty good site, um, to be in, in all aspects of the health of the site of it, attracting visitors, it building the relationship, it essentially selling its products and selling her as the person to help out. Um, not a pretty site, not nothing amazing going on, but she found that little intersection of differentiation for herself. It's not about the recipes. It's about learning how to be a cook using plants. Boom. That was the little piece that worked for her and she went all in and she's also been running that for a while. Now this site, there is a slim chance that you've heard me talk about this site before. If you're in the content and conversion membership program, you've definitely heard me talk about this before. Um, this is my friend Alejandra. She is an awesome person. Uh, she came out to one of my abundant circle events. So she came out when I rented a 34,000 square foot mansion in Thailand and she came out for that mastermind for five days. So travel fashion girl, right? Her little circles are, there's three of them. So it's fashion for travel, carry on only. And that's the big one to me is carry on only because as someone who lived traveling for four years, I did four years full time traveling, man, to even think of going carry on only was crazy at that point. Now that I got a home base, I do carry on only and I totally appreciate it. But she was full nomad carry on as a lady who cares about fashion. That's difficult to do, which is why it deserved content. So she gets, she gets even more, uh, more visits than my wife does. So this site I know gets something like 1.5 page million page views per month per month. So this thing's getting like 15 to almost 20 million page views per year. Um, and then, so start here, but here's how she's broken up her content, right? So there's destinations. So people who are searching like what to pack when I travel to Africa type questions. Then there's packing. So there's actual packing lists for different things. Then there's the clothing itself, pants, dresses, underwear, family, plus sizes over, like she's breaking it down based on the, the garment and who it's for. Now, all of these things rank. She is ranking. She is a traffic monster because she's got all of this content up. Shoes, what shoes do you bring? How do you bring them? Uh, then she's even getting into the beauty. I think this is like a whole untapped resource for her to potentially double her revenue. So how does she make her money? Well, her business has some cool sides. Number one is clearly there's a lot of affiliate marketing going on, right? Like she is, she's promoting and recommending other people's stuff, but she has her own product. She's actually built out her own, uh, packing cubes. I'll show you. These are hers. She, she was working on this when we were in, um, when we were actually in Thailand at the mastermind. So these, this is her brand. She's having them made in China. She's selling them, them herself. And essentially packing cubes are a great way. And the universal uh, adapter, I have one very similar to this. So she's kind of white labeling products and having her own a secret bra wallet. So she's creating physical products and how they will all work together to help her audience achieve that goal, which is ready for it. Fashion, travel, carry on only. You see this bag? This is this is her bit, right? One bag that's carry on that's got all the stuff that you need in her four little accessories. So she's carrying her own stuff. The four packing cubes in one suitcase was her bit. You can buy other packing cube kits that has a giant one, a medium one, and a small one. They don't fit in one. So she this is her way of doing it better. Um, so you can see she's actually started, we're on another website at this. Compass Rose is a straight up brand that she's running because she grew the audience first. She had an audience of people who know her, like her and trust her because of the great content that she's been putting out for years and years. She's been running this website since 2012, seven years of aggressive. And this girl is aggressive with her content marketing. In fact, she has, uh, I wonder if it shows at the bottom, she now runs a whole team of content creators, um, which is, is pretty, pretty impressive to be perfectly honest, but, um, that's a whole nother area. Let's take a look at one of her posts to give you an idea of what her post like looks like. Um, long champs, the best travel hag bag. So obviously this is, I'm out of my, I don't know what a long champ is or a travel handbag. Uh, you can see this is, this is long form content for a handbag, right? Talking about travel handbags, which for the right 
person for the right lady, this is super important information. This is a big deal, right? What bag am I going to take on that trip to blank? That's a big deal. And I know ladies spend lots and lots and lots of money on bags. So an affiliate link for a $400 or a thousand dollar bag, that's going to have a hefty commission on it. So then she goes to the other side, which is backpacking Southeast Asia, right? So it's not all fancy. It's some just kind of what basics do you need? And this is her thing is if you bring all of these pieces, you'll be able to mix and match and you won't have to do laundry. It's like, a capsule wardrobe thing. My wife loved chatting with her and has learned a lot about how to pack and how to travel better. But look, like content, 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 content. And then links to all of the different packing lists. Maybe you're going to the Thailand islands. You want more specific, right? We went from Southeast Asia. Now we are zooming into that next level. This is how a silo works. So she's building on the silos and we can see that it just keeps going and more and more and more and more content. Um, there's a bunch of uh, affiliate links in here. And then not only are there, so like the Teva sandals right here, this is probably an affiliate link Birkenstock. Gizha, that's probably a, a Birkenstock, like an affiliate link there and so on and so forth. So super, super powerful. And again, the overlap here is a trifold, uh, Venn diagram of women's fashion for travel and carry on only because when you get there, you want to get off the plane, you want to walk down the aisle, you want to be the first one into immigration. So you don't wait in a hour and 30 minute line to get in the country like I just did. But either way, we're all good. Next one. All right, we're on a roll. Are you guys with me here? Is this is this rocking and rolling? Is this making sense? Like, sometimes we just have to really go down my calculation was wrong. That happens all the time, Dimitri, don't trip on it. Um, weaponized vegans. Kramer caught that. I like that. So the goal here again is I'm going to show this to you over and over and over through repetition. I want to remind you right now real quick, no one that we're looking at, no one who's created success online had any clue how to do what they did. They just started and they put out content and starting is content. They just published. She just started publishing packing lists for, for different places. I believe she started doing, it almost started more on the travel side. She was just talking about just the, the different travel destinations and what she did. And she's from LA fashion's a big deal. She loves, so she just always had this fashion slant and it just evolved to what she's doing now. And she's got a team of writers and she's got product creators. She's got manufacturers in China. She didn't have a grand plan for that. I guarantee you, she didn't have a grand plan to be manufacturing her own brand of travel accessories in China when she started blogging about her travels because she just went full digital nomad and started blogging about her travel. And she's like, I'm a fashionista. I need to make my fashionista stuff carry on with me when I'm backpacking Thailand. So she started writing about it and getting traffic, right? Audience first, giving great value first and everything else worked for there. Um, how easy is it to rank a new website with a keyword density of 20 to 30 on keyword finder? So Jenic, easy. I mean, I don't know, like how easy do you consider two years of writing five blog posts per week that are epic? Because if you do that, you'll rank. I can guarantee you, you'll rank there. So like, I don't know, it seems pretty easy to me. It's a long time. It's a shit ton of work, but like it's theoretically quite simple. Um, it's just about doing the work over and over. She started travel fashion girl, started a website in 2010. She did not ask how long is it going to take for me to rank this? No, she just started because she was sharing stuff. She knew she was creating something. It's a different mindset. It's not how long is it going to take me to get something right? It's how long is it? I'm just going to give, I need to give this of the world. The Walt Disney world dad is like, I just need to give what I know about Walt Disney world to the world. The iPhone photography guy was like, dude, I've stopped carrying my digital SLR camera around because my iPhone is so badass. I need to make sure other people know how to do that too. He started giving to the world. My wife started giving channeled angel messages to the world because she learned how to channel angel messages. And it was like, these are fucking crazy. Cool. We started giving. I started giving everything I know about digital marketing to the world through YouTube. I wasn't thinking, how long is it going to take me to rank to get to blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. I'm giving value. That's the key. That's really the key. And Pervin, of course, uh, a niche website on copywriting, of course, has competition, but you need to find that, that specific thing. You write three K words a day. Perfect. Long-term game. Stick with it for three years, Janet. That's it. That's the key. Um, Weaponized vegans. Let's see here. How easy is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, mom's business. You took a lot of time working, deciding your niche, hearing your live lets you know you're going in the right direction. Cool. Good to hear that. Um, I'm, I'm glad that you've, you've found our content and I'm glad it's helpful. Like it really is just like, let's just go blaze forward and give value to other people. Um, struggling with validating a niche, just, just 
start, man. Just make sure it's in your heart and just go with it, right? Like there was no validation of our angel niche. There was no number that said this was a good idea. In fact, all of the numbers based on all of the uh, how to make money online bullshit courses out there would have told us do not go down the angel spirituality angel channeled message space. There's no money in it is what all of the data would say. And we're absolutely doing wonderfully for ourselves financially because we just did it because it was in our hearts and we were like and at first there were three years in we were like is this even gonna work like why are we doing it, and it was like you know what this is special we have to get this out to the world regardless if it pays if i have to keep a side job to keep putting these messages out that's what i'm gonna do and that's what we did we both worked full-time jobs to keep these messages coming out about year four it flipped and it got really interesting and now that we're about 10 years in it got really it the, the numbers are incredible um yeah, Donna, this is this is about uh, online business, affiliate marketing. You could build courses. Once you grow an audience who knows, like, and trusts you, affiliate marketing becomes easy. You can you could sell courses, you could sell coaching, you could sell events, you could do there's so much you can do. It's really about the core of what makes affiliate marketing work, which is growing an audience who knows, likes, and trusts you, and then being of service to them and offering them what they actually want. Um Cool. Got a lot of people in here. Um, Patty, welcome. Uh, glad that that Christina connected us. That's awesome. Um, at what stage is it good to start doing link building? I do. I do very, very little outreach. I do. I guess spots on other people's podcasts, and I didn't start that for about a year and a half in. Um, but you can start right away if you want. Um, Penny twenty. Okay. Um, cool. Darius, you found those to be helpful. Great. Um, devouring content. Cool. Start publishing, Jono. It's all about how much you can publish. Can a website covering three or four loosely related categories rank well in the long term? Sure, but I mean, you, you need three X to four X the content pretty much. Like it's better to focus for sure. Um, cool. All right, let's go back in. So the next one, dun, 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 the knit hacker. Okay. So this is where knitting and art overlap, right? So this is where she says where art and yarn hook up. Now, what she's doing is selling as an affiliate finished products. So like these um, astronaut gloves that are hand knitted, right? Um, there's there's two ways you can buy these things right now. So you could buy the how to plan because knitters follow plans. I don't, I don't know anything about knitting really. Um, so you can follow a plan. So I clicked on this just to show you what, what she's selling. Um, so you can get the pattern here for like seven bucks. And I don't know if that's an affiliate link or if she owns that plan. Um, or you can go buy the these gloves on Etsy, they're like $40 on Etsy. So she's creating artistic things, right? She she obviously liked knitting. You're not gonna go teach people knitting if you don't love knitting and knitters love knitting. So this is one of those cool little situations where all her yarn, all everything she buys is a deduction. So she's knitting these cool things. She's making patterns or following and selling those patterns as an affiliate. And then she's selling the finished products. These are $40 gloves. I don't know how much yarn is in that. It's all it's all labor, it's all man hours, but that's a $40 pair of wool gloves. That's, that's amazing. So this is just a great example of, she's not just knitting gloves for the sake of gloves. They need to be artistic gloves. They need to be gloves that have a little statement that make things a little bit different, right? That, that are a little funky and that's what makes it fun. So like right here, the, the resist hat, um, crocheting batwing, right? So everything she's doing, like this is not necessarily just standard clothing for the basics of, of what I need to cover my hands to keep them warm. It's, it's that next level of artistic on top. And we could just click in here, like the content, there's just, it's just content, content, content is what she's doing. Um, a lot of free content that essentially is, um, Oops, I clicked on the T. So she sells T-shirts also uh, for people who who want to kind of uh, represent her stuff. Um, here's her Etsy shop. Here's her product recommendations, and here's her T-shirt. So essentially, she's selling things she's making. She's selling as an affiliate products and also um, downloadable um, patterns. And then she's selling T-shirts. These types of T-shirts that she's making. But I wanted to go into the content content a little bit more, and I can tell you in the. So, so if you think about the demographic of knitters, right, it's probably going to be women over 40 is, is a rough assumption. So in that world, like Pinterest would be a great, I don't know if she's on Pinterest, but man, Pinterest would be a great add-on for this completely. But also these women have time. They're on their iPads. They're looking for new things. They're knitting different things. They're, they're just searching for new patterns, new ideas, new things to make because they want to impress their friends. They want to give their grandkids stuff. They want to make fun, interesting, unique things. Um, where is the... 
there's got to be a blog here. So I'm just, and, and again, like when I'm saying, you know, the sites don't have to be beautiful. Like it's a clean site, but I, I can't navigate this thing, but it doesn't matter because people find posts like this because people are like looking for um, specific keyword phrases that will enter them into a specific blog. So this one is obviously, uh, I'm, I'm guessing 15 hours is fast, right? To me, thinking about knitting a sweater, that sounds like a, like a two year process for me. Uh, so a 15 hour sweater knit seems like a really, really fast thing to do. And that's her content. And she's giving away the pattern for free over there. Um, man, there's not even much content on that page itself. What's interesting, I found all these, they're all ranking in their own unique way. Um, how to crochet a betta fish and a frog and an octopus, right? So these are the kinds of things, like this is definitely a keyword phrase, like this is definitely a keyword phrase. So all these different things are what get searched and it's pretty much like how to show the pattern. Now, if you notice, this page has no content, right? But she's probably one of the only people who ranks or even has ever created a post about this. So. This is where in one of these niches, like the crafting niche, like you could go create a post that has a thousand words focused on this and outrank her if she's actually getting traffic from here. But she's simply moving people from her blog over to her Etsy store. And again, I got ad blockers and all this stuff on. Um, so that was an affiliate link I just went through is how I know because my it pulled my ad blocker. So this might be her actual thing and she's selling it as an affiliate, but it might actually just be an affiliate thing of something she found. And she is just literally loading up her site. This is just affiliate link after affiliate link, right? Like title, image, affiliate link. Now, if there's no one else ranking for these and no one else going after this kind of a, a phrase, but people are searching for it, she might be able to rank with that thin of content. I would recommend doing more content like what we saw on the uh, iPhone photography site. But again, like, She's selling t-shirts, she's selling the things she's knitting and she's making knitting things, right? She's just doing her stuff. I think it's incredible to me that the whole knitting world and, and boy, the, the world of knitting and yarn and crochet and quilting has a big, big world. Okay, next one out is thesacredwomb.com. So now I put this one on because I wanted one that would clearly isolate and remove half of whoever's watching, right? Because we probably got about a 50-50 gender mix here. So this website is all about befriending your menstrual cycle as a woman. And it's also, it's very shamanic, I think is, is what I would say. So she has created a podcast. She does a bi-weekly podcast. She's got a Facebook group and a lot of blog content. And it's all about helping women create a positive relationship with their menstrual cycle and really how to get kind of um, kind of shamanic personal growth through that process, which is amazing, right? And, and I don't know, I have no clue in this niche. Obviously I'm out of my realm, but it's something that women deal with. There's a lot of interesting energy and challenges and, and emotions and, and hormone. There's, there's a lot that goes on. So it's one of those things that probably gets searched a fair bit. It probably has a lot of interesting search queries around it. And you can see she's got this kind of shamanic kind of vibe to things about um, menstrual medicine and these are the different posts that she's putting. So I want to look at one of her newest posts because a post is what's going to drive most of the traffic to the site. It's not going to come to the homepage. It's going to come into one of these posts. You can see it's it's a good long, long post site that talks about what it is. And then she has this professional training. So this is a $1,500, I believe. It's like um, 1,700 or 1,800 pounds. Uh, so I think it's about $1,500 uh, training course. So she sells an information product that is literally $1,500. She also sells shamanic items. So she's got drums. She's got kind of, uh, I think this is an e-course preparing the womb for pregnancy, um, clear the womb. So she's got energy clearing type stuff. Uh, she's got audio courses available. And then, the, oh, not the podcast, I wanna go to the events. Cause I, I think she's doing live events also that are separate to the others, which it is. So she has her live events going on that this is an online event. It's 33 pounds um, and it's a 15 day, uh, healing sadhana. I don't know what that is, but it's, it's a 15 day something that's coming up. And then the training, I think this is where it talks about her. So it's a two year professional training is what she's actually selling. And if you notice, she's got an application process. So she's really trying to make sure she's getting the right people in on this 
kind of uh, group coaching that she's putting in. This is not a sales page, click and purchase, but it's also a higher end thing. So it probably requires a different type of a sales cycle to make that sale happen. You can see it still does a pretty good job at selling what is involved, what's in on it. Um, I think it's a brilliant idea. And really I wanted to show on this one, right? So it's, it's, the, the 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 multiple circles on this one in, in many senses is is managing and kind of the the process and the emotions and the the physical side of the the kind of 3d world side of the menstrual cycle but then it's also taking it and elevating it to a spiritual level as well so that's kind of the overlap here and a podcast i think podcasts are brilliant you need a core content strategy it can be blogging podcasting or videos that's it Instagram is not a core content strategy. Facebook is not a core content strategy. Pinterest is not a core content strategy. You have to be doing one of the core pillars, which is written word through a WordPress blog. And some of these aren't even on WordPress, by the way, uh, written, written word through a blog or spoken word through the podcast or video is the three. You can support that with social media, but it needs to go that way. And you can see these are podcasts and they actually link up pretty much exactly with her blog posts. So she creates a podcast every two weeks, then she has it turned into, or she turns it into a blog post herself and she's selling a $1,500 annual once a year she sells or maybe twice a year she sells her $1,500 course so she brings in a group once or twice a year each individual pays $1,500 there and then she's got her other smaller courses for uh, 10 euros to 33 euros and that's it a very successful site helping women with this specific focused thing that she probably has a very very powerful story around this just like how um, Alex has a powerful story in the world of travel and fashion, right? Like if you were to read this, I bet you will hear about her story about how she got to this point where she knew she wanted to help women with this specific thing. All right, we're rocking and rolling y'all. So this one is eclectic to row. Now this is an older site. It is not the prettiest site in the path, but it gets a lot of traffic. And this site is essentially to row deck reviews. Tarot readers are, they, they love tarot decks. Like if you're into tarot, um, the different decks have different artwork and they, they, they all follow the same structure, right? There's like, a, I think it's a 72 card structure. Somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, but the artwork changes in, in each one. So it's all, they have the same cards, but it's the artwork that changes. So she's just literally reviewing different tarot cards. And that's it. So she earns as an affiliate from the tarot cards and she has free tarot readings, which is like an app tarot card meaning. So this is like a, a dictionary of the different cards, right? These are the, the cards I was talking about. The, there's like 72 of them or whatever it is. Um, so she has those kinds of uh, 78 cards. Aha, I was off by a few. So she has the, the meaning. So if somebody searches like, what is the meaning of the uh, four of cups, right? Or the, the two of pentacles, uh, they could find one of her like here's the Ace of Cups post, which is the meaning of Ace of Cups. They can get a free tarot card reading for people who are asking for specific tarot card readings. But then ultimately the tarot decks is where she's getting a lot of her um, actual income is coming from. So there's two ways, obviously here it is right up top. These are the buy from, and you can see where she obviously has traffic in Canada, the UK and in the US, which is why she has the different um, buttons for each. She rates them herself. She writes about them. She puts some images about the deck in there. Now people are able to pay. You can pay to have the cards. I've, I've actually bought a listing on here for Melanie's, um, cards that we, we have a deck of, of cards out in on Amazon. So we paid to get her to review them, to get them on the site. We get a backlink for that. And also she is now an affiliate. So that's how she makes money on both sides of this. There pay, there are, I don't know if they're all paid listings or not. I was just like, how do I grease the wheel and make this thing work? Um, so <laughs> that's just sometimes my approach to things. So she makes money from adding new listings as paid listings. So they're like kind of paid guest posts in many senses, but she does the writing herself. And then there is the affiliate on the other side. And since she's been doing this for... I, this site is, I think this site goes back to the late nineties possibly is how old this site is. And she's still just updating it just more and more and more. And it just ranks for all kinds of keyword phrases in the world of Tarot. People find them, they see the reviews. This is what people are interested in is what do the cards look like? Because that's the big thing for a Tarot reader. They want a deck that they like the artwork on. Um, and so they're able to look through and it becomes kind of like a an easier to browse site for Tarot specifically that'll show you the artwork that they care about and she knows what they care about because she's 
a tarot reader. Like she, that's what she does. Right. And, and everybody makes fun of me because I say tarot like a Californian and supposedly it's like tarot, I think is, is how other places would say it. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. And that's it. So people can come here. And once they realize that eclectic.net has all the tarot decks, when someone's ready to buy another deck, they come here, they look around, they're like, ah, I really like the artwork on this one. This is my next deck. Perfect. Boom. I'm going to click and buy. So she's made it easy for her target market as people who want new tarot decks to A, get an analysis of the deck on her rating because they trust her and B, to get an idea of what the imagery looks like in here. And then they see the reading, the rating and they click and buy and she earns income again, both sides from the listing being published and also on the other side. Now, if you're starting a new site, you can't really pay, like put yourself, it's difficult to get yourself in a position where people are going to pay you to put content on your site because you don't have a massive amount of authority, right? The fact that she has a highly, highly, highly authoritative website is why I wanted our cards on her site. It's why I was willing to pay her to get my listing up there. And as we rank and as people find it through her internal search engine, right? Because they can search up here for um, angel cards, for example. And as they find through there, she earns income come based on the affiliate on the other side. And then that's what she's got going. We've got a few more and Lincoln, we're getting up to the one I was telling you about. Um, that was a travel related, but, uh, I'm going to take a look. So Devrin, well, what's up, Devrin? Good to see you, man. I uh, hope you're enjoying on here. So let's see here. Um, Penny's talking to Stephanie about dragon naturally dictating. I do use that personally. Um, so, wow, just stealing and republishing people's stuff in another language, that's pretty shady, man. I don't know if I would recommend doing that. Uh, Eve Keith, you've gotten good on Facebook, inspirational posts, thinking about turning on blog posts, definitely. You need to get that content on a search engine because once it's dead on Facebook, it's pretty much done. Uh, Stephanie Bledsoe, how to translate YouTube and podcasts to content. Um, Otter.ai is a great website. It's an, uh, an AI, or you can use um, Temi, T-E-M-I. So let me show you here. So it's otter.ai. And so the question was, how do you translate or how do you turn audio or video into actual written words? So this right here, I think you get 600 minutes per day month for free. Um, so otter.ai, it just, it'll translate. You just upload your audio file and it goes from there. And then there's Temi, T E M I.com. And Temi is a little more expensive. You don't get, I don't know if you get any free off of Temi, but it's better. It's, I think it's 10 cents a minute is what it ends up doing. It takes five minutes. Uh, yeah, it's 10 cents a minute. It takes five minutes. So if you got a 30 minute thing, it's three bucks and dude, it, it gives you the best quality and you can upload a video right in it. Um, I have a, a, my, my content team uses this. My wife, it, my wife uses this, like everyone uses this and it's, it's got a, the best accuracy I've found out of all of the kind of AI transcription tools. So that's the cheap way to, to go about it, um, to repurpose the content. Uh Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's see here what we got. Um, let's see. Written contents. Yeah. Oh, Twainy saying, uh, I love to crochet. You need patterns. Perfect. She sells the patterns. That's awesome. Um, 15 hours is fast for sweater. Okay, cool. I figured that was, that was the thing. Uh, Janik, I think it's shady, man. I think it's, uh, I think you're stealing people's content and translating it without the right to steal their content. That's called plagiarism. Even if you're turning it into another language. Um, I think that's, that's very, very shady. And I think you should build real value. You should create real content. Don't try, don't do shady stuff. Don't steal people's content here. I am creating this content, right? If you went and translated this to Russian and people swipe my content all the time, like that's just up, man. Like, don't do that. Don't be shady. Like help create value in the lives of others. Um, your site's about three months old. You're getting 10 to 15 clicks per day to Amazon. That's awesome. No sales yet. That's normal. Um, I don't care if he ranks Janik, uh, that got blocked, dude. You're that's just, you obviously don't get it right. Let's, let's give people value, be give value, um, in the lives of others is really the key. So Twainy, I'm glad you're like in the live. Um, have you made a video on the, the, the three pillars of content? Yeah, Josh, it's the, the three pillar strategy is really the thing. Um, yeah. So commit like your site's three months old, 10 to 15 clicks a day. So keep writing, put better content, learn how to pre-sell better, get better at what you're doing. It's not that they're not taking the right actions. It's you haven't created the content that compels people to buy. You maybe are creating content that ranks, but you're not, you're not doing your job as an affiliate, right? If you're not getting conversions on the other end. 
and then go do this for three years, not three months, right? To look back at three months is like, I planted a seed in my garden in May and in June, I dug it up to see if it's not growing and why is this thing not growing? And it's because it German, it needs months to germinate and a business, it's a three to five year plan. There's just no way around a three to five year plan. Like that's it, you, you just have to do that much. Um, cool, glad you're enjoying the value. We got a couple left. I gotta keep this under two hours. I didn't even think it was gonna go two hours, but um, YouTube does something really weird to the video if it's over two hours. So next one up, uh, this is a travel specific site. And I wanted to show a, a travel from a different way. So we did the travel in the world of, um, so well, we've looked at the travel to Disney World, which is a specific like thing, right? Like um, it's a specific, destination, right? Then we looked at travel from a standpoint of fashion and packing and what do I bring? And here is travel to a very, very, very specific island. So it's Anguilla. Now, the interesting thing about her is she ranks so damn well. If you go to Google and you type in Anguilla, A-N-G-U-I-L-L-A, I guarantee mm, the odds are she's going to be on the first page. Now, think about that. Anguilla is a country right? Like they have a government, they have like a tourism board, the Google maps is clearly going to show up. So she has some really heavy competition and she dominates. If you search Anguilla beaches, just space, which is the second most search keyword phrase, second to Anguilla by itself, she's literally dominating the search. So she lives there. Now her she started just documenting this land she loves. She, I think she's Canadian. Um, I think she was born in Canada and her family moved there. Their, her family kind of did a semi-retirement and they just decided to leave the cold and go live on Anguilla. And she just started blogging about it. And now she has she's monetizing in two ways. So number one is this save 10% island-wide. And I'll look at it in her content too, but this is this is a unique monetization mechanism that she kind of created that's really noteworthy. So what she's done is she created enough traffic that she goes around and actually created this Anguilla card. And this Anguilla card is good for one year and it essentially gives you discounts, 10% discounts on all kinds of locations. And the idea is you buy the card, I think it's 50 bucks, right? I think it's like $49 for the card and you could say 10% on your hotel, you could say 10% on restaurants, you could say 10, it is, it's $49. So you get this card and you send, you save 10% at all these other places. So for me as an individual, am I gonna spend $490 on my trip to Anguilla? Like, of course, like, like you drop five grand easy on a trip, right? With a hotel, the transportation, the food, the everything, like the events, going out scuba diving, whatever it is, like people, family of four will easily drop four grand, five grand. Um, so that means you could save 400 to $500 when you use this card and it costs you 50 bucks. So it's a no brainer. But the cool part is all of the businesses that are listed pay her to be a part of the card, right? So this is another example of her double ending this transaction. So all of these individuals are actually, she has a wait list. She has so much traffic for these. So. The, the interesting part is at first, none of the businesses wanted to buy in because she didn't have a giant audience of buyers. And none of the buyers wanted to buy the cards because she didn't have a huge list of places that it was available at. So she was, that's the network problem, right? She's, she's fighting a, a two-sided battle. There's a, a two-front war, if you will, because she needs to get enough people buying the card so when they show it at the at the front desk or at the restaurant, whatever it is, that the owners are like, wow, we're getting so many people showing with this card, it's good for business, right? But then there's the other side is there needs to be enough businesses for the card to be work at to make it worth it to buy the card. So that took a while, but now that she's kind of over that proverbial hump through putting out more content, putting out more content, now she has a waiting list of business owners who want to pay her money to be listed on her discount card. That is huge. Now, the other thing that she's doing brilliantly is like on the on the left, she, so she's making money from sponsorships. She's also at least, I'm, I'm pretty sure she's at least selling leads. So some of her best um, content is on like weddings, right? So it's a destination wedding place. Where is it? There it is. So um, destination weddings. And she clearly recommends some wedding people to work on that. And I guarantee you there is a paid relationship in that. That is not charity to be recommending um, specific locations. Uh, but she's got a villa, like she's got real estate. So she obviously will partner with a real estate agent or a real estate firm, um, offshore corporations, which would partner with like a legal company or a tax company, the, all, obviously all 
all the restaurants. I think that's probably, you know, imagine living on a beautiful island and going around the island, eating at all of the restaurants, deducting the expense of the meal, documenting it for random people. Like that's so cool. Hotels, villas, cheap accommodations, there's a real estate aspect to it. And all the while, she's literally just documenting like the, the best Caribbean island and Gila Bay vacations, car rentals, weather. So so there's all these different things, right? And if you think about the, the, the visitor, it's the same basic mindset, right? So the basic mindset is um, Larry, the, the, Larry in the office in Tulsa, Oklahoma, who has a vacation booked to and and Gila starting next Friday, he leaves. Like he's not able to think about work all week at work. He's thinking about Anguilla and he's literally like building an itinerary of all the things he wants to do. I know you know what I'm talking about because you've done it too. We've all done this. So she now has just put up enough content that ranks so many, so many different keyword phrases that now when people search for what am I going to do when I'm in Anguilla next week? They find her, they want her card. They maybe find a villa through there. There may be, how am I going to, what Island am I going to have my uh, wedding on? They're like, Oh, what about Anguilla? Can I find out about Anguilla beaches? Let me find out about Anguilla weddings. She ranks for that. Where can I find out about Anguilla businesses is Anguilla a tax haven, right? Like, so she got all this content that ranks for all these different types of people. And then there is a specific monetization path for each and every one of them, whether it's an affiliate link, whether it's a pay per lead situation, whether it's just, she makes $1,500 a month to have that real estate company on the site. I don't know what her relationships are on the monetization. I want to be super clear of that. I don't know her personally. I know her father. Um, and I, I, so I know kind of this story and how this has evolved through her dad, but really, and obviously who is traveling out there and wants to just save 10% on everything. It's pretty quick math of, am I going to spend more than $500 at restaurants and hotels that yes, okay, I should buy the card because it would be a no brainer not to save the money. Um, pretty fantastic stuff. And she's actually really good on social media as well. Um, so I think this is a really interesting way. Now, uh, you know, so Vo, Lincoln Vo was on here. I believe he's on the big island of Hawaii, which might be a, a, you might be able to focus on the big island, right? Like most mainlanders look at Hawaii and it's like, okay, Hawaii. Yeah. That's our state. It's like, well, kind of, it's like eight or nine islands. It's actually more than that. And every island is so freaking different. Um, you know, I've been to Maui, I've been to Kauai, I've been to uh, Oahu, and they're all just incredibly different islands. So like, A, this could potentially work for each of the Hawaiian islands, but like you could replicate this model for like Kona Town, which is like one area, one side of one island, right? Or you could like, there's, there's so many ways that this could work in replicating the model. So like, um, the French district in New Orleans, right? Could be one that this is about. Like Brooklyn could have one of these type situations. Now you gotta be passionate about the food, the travel, the documenting, the vlogging, boom. But like, here's a model showing that this clearly works. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get us through these last two and then we'll chat in the comments for a quick minute. So this is 52cards.com, cards with a K, and this is their homepage. Now, first of all, like, like I said, not all these sites are gonna be pretty, um, but these, all these sites are actually working. So one of the things they've got over a million subscribers on their YouTube channel, which is, uh, again, talking about that core content mechanism. You could see there's probably some blog posts in here, but this is clearly, so let's go to learn. That's probably where it would be. This is clearly not the core content machine, right? This is their home where they monetize individuals. So I clicked on 52K cards on the learn and it's like the foundations of card magic, learn more. Um, they've got their academy, okay? So we've now got a course. This is, we're getting into the info product courses, which is how to get a result. And that result is card magic, right? How to use the basics of card magic or deception, et cetera. So they've got a free course, $52 and a free course. We can view all courses. I'm curious how many they have. Um, so they've got a few courses. Generally speaking, 52 bucks is, is all they're, they're at. Um, now I'm noticing these are different people. Maybe they're selling other people's courses. Maybe not. I don't actually fully know. Um, but really I think the big area where they're earning their income is the shop. Now this is a Shopify store. And so we've gone to a subdomain at this point. So this whole idea, like grow the audience first and then offer them things they want to buy. It works whether you're, you're creating products in China, whether you're reselling other people's cards. If you know anything about magic, um, magic uses 
uh, they call like stripped deck where one side is like a half a millimeter thinner. So if, if the cards reverse, you can feel it. Um, there's just, there's different magic decks of cards and not just the looks, but the, you could do different tricks with different decks of cards. Some cards, some decks have like two Jack of hearts. So you can do a specific card trick that, that leverages the Jack of hearts. And the, like I moved it from the bottom or from the middle to the top. And it's like, I didn't move it. I had two Jack of hearts in there. Right? You just didn't know it was sitting on the top and I, I got you to choose a deck of hearts. So they sell the actual cards themselves. And you can see there's a lot of them. And the thing about magicians and people who love magic is, so a professional magician, right? Someone who who does stage magic, they they need like one routine for an hour and that's it. And they can tour that and they can own that for years on end. Think David Copperfield, right? Like he does the same magic show night in and night out in Vegas and the dude is crushing it. But this is not for David Copperfield. This is for people at home who think it's cool, who think it's interesting, and they want to impress their friends and family. So what does that individual have to do? Well, they have to keep buying new tricks because they did that trick. They bought the deck, they learned the trick, they mastered it, they did it at Thanksgiving. Everybody was like, whoa, how'd you do that? And they felt great for a minute. And then the next day hits and they're like, well, shit, I don't, I don't have any more tricks on my sleeve. So they buy more decks, right? Well, who do they buy from? The people who they trust. Now I want to go find their YouTube and I'm amazed I can't find their YouTube from up here uh, because I want you to see the, ah, there it is. Let's go to their YouTube. So I want you to see their, their YouTube channel. So they, they went all in on, on YouTube videos to start and they've got 1 million, 11,000 subscribers, which is freaking amazing. And they run an ad on their welcome video. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Uh, but what we're going to show, I want to go into videos real quick and I'm going to go look at what their most popular videos are. And I guarantee looking at their most popular videos, we could probably figure out what their most popular selling card tricks are. Um, so like card trick, this might, you know, this might have a correlating uh, card tricks, civil cut tutorial, like this might have a correlating deck. So these might end in, if you want the deck to make this easy, go here and grab the deck. Um, but you can just see they're teaching, they're doing how to things, right? Powerful card trick tutorial, torn and restart. Card. They're, they're teaching magic, but at some point it gets to the point where you're like, I need a special deck to do that special trick. Like that trick blew me away. Now I need to go buy the deck. Well, where are you going to buy it from? If you just watched and we're talking like 9.7 million views, 9.1 million views. What's their total views? 109 million views. And like, I would love to know anyone watching this video have any clue who these people are? Like I've never heard of them. I have ne never heard of them before. I've heard of Penguin Magic, which is a different one who also uses videos to sell magic tricks, but these guys are focused on cards only, right? So it's not just magic trick, it's card magic specifically. And then they sell decks on the back end. These dudes are absolute, or girls, or I don't even know if this dudes, girls, what? These human beings, I hope they're human beings, are crushing it right now, selling, 10, 11, $12 decks of cards. They're selling 20, $30 courses on how to, and they're absolutely crushing it. No bullshit, high ticket, super stress funnel and trying to, you know, no stealing their information or, or swiping someone else's video from another language and making it. No, no, no. They're giving value through great videos that teach people things they want to learn, which is how to do a magic trick, how to roll a coin, how to do sleight of hand. Then they sell them things because they built the relationship by teaching them what they want to do. The same way the woodworking guy that we looked at earlier, he teaches you how to use a planer because there's some dude in Omaha, Wisconsin or Nebraska that, that searched how to use a planer. And he finds the, the woodworking guy who's like, here's how you use a planer. And he's like, wow, this guy's great. I'm going to buy his course to learn my other hand tools from this guy because the trust is there because the content was there. The same reason why my homegirl Alejandra sells packing cubes and power converters and other bits and pieces related to travel because she's built so much trust in that space. Final one here. And this is a behemoth. I saved uh, one of the behemoths for the end. This is Josh. I was on the, the nomad cruise with this dude. He's super smart. He's a really good marketer. Um, Expert photography. Now, I, I want you to just look at this headline for a minute. Do you want to understand your frustrating camera and take great photos today? So there's a problem in a proverbial problem for a lot of people who have bought fancy digital SLR or um, uh, three, four thirds, digital four thirds cameras, uh, cameras with interchangeable lenses, essentially DSLRs, but they've evolved a little bit, right? So there's, there's these super fancy cameras, cameras that look like this is essentially what I'm getting at. And they are 
computers. They're supercomputers. They have so many settings and people will buy the cameras because they're so affordable now and they have no clue how to use them. And they get the screen full of all these options and they, they're overwhelmed and they never use it. And they still use their phone in their pocket. Uh, surprise, surprise. He is buddies with the iPhone photography guy, right? So anyways, the whole bit here is learn how to use this camera that you've got, right? Like you've got this really fancy camera, like learn the basics of it. So how does he do this? Well, number one is the guides and this navigation is terrible. Like Josh, if you ever see this change your navigation, dude, you should not, this would destroy a mobile device anyways. So let's look, um, astrophotography, which is, you want to talk about a super, super focused niche, like, like the photo photographing the Milky way is what astrophotography is essentially. So the complete guide to astrophotography, look up at the top, right? See how small that is. We're going to scroll, scroll. This is the contents. The table of contents is longer than the blog post was from the knitting girl, right? So then it just goes into it. And it just goes on. Here's what you need. Here's how to do it. He, like literally he teaches them how to do astrophotography. Guess what he's got at the bottom of this post. I haven't been through this post personally. I actually haven't seen it, but I know he sells an astrophotography course, right? So I'm just going to like, so you read and you're like, how to do astrophotography. You find this blog post and you read it. You're like, man, this dude, this is awesome. Like, wow. He chose me in the Lightroom, how to do everything, get to the bottom and this right here, I'm gonna click on that. Oh, that's just an image. Did he not transition to the sale pitch? Got it right there. Click here. So this is getting into, um, I think this is his, okay. Intermediate, intermediate landscape, photography, blogging. Dude, maybe he doesn't have it at the bottom. So this is kind of funny. And it just goes to show we're all evolving and doing the best we can because if I go up to his main navigation, which is here in the store, I can click. And we've got the, oh, goodness gracious. I'm all over the place, y'all. Wow, this, I didn't realize this site had this many little things. So Milky Way Photography. So it's a video course on how to do Milky Way Photography, right? And I'm, I'm like, like, I'm so surprised he's not linking that massive post to the product. It is. Um, and you know, this is a fake countdown. You show up at any time. It's going to start you at 20 hours. Like it's just, it's, it's a lot of the, the persuasion BS that I don't personally like to do. I don't, I'm, I think there's easier ways to sell, uh, or just more, uh, genuine ways to sell. Um, I'm trying to get down to the price. Is it 97 on this one? Or was it like 67? Um, so sorry. There it is, sixty-seven dollars. So launch price one for it's yours today, only sixty-seven bucks, right? So, so he's got what courses did he have? He had, um, and most of his courses come in two formats. He's got the ebook format and then the video format. So the ebook format's cheaper. Uh, I don't know what his funnel looks like, but I'm guessing he's upselling the video format on the back of the ebook ones. Uh, so let's look. So he's got beginner photography video course, beginner photography ebook, landscape landscape, time-lapse, Lightroom, and Milky Way. This is editing. So if you think about his circles, what he's done is he's built um, the beginner circle for photography, right? So it's beginner with your fancy ass camera that you have no clue how to use. Then it's landscape photography. So it's not just photography, it's landscape. Then the time-lapse, which is like the lots of pictures pulled together into a video. And then obviously the Milky Way and the Lightroom editing. Um, but really what's super powerful on his stuff um, are these just massive, what was the last one I did? I think I did that one. So we'll go to time lapse. So he's got a time lapse course. And this post is what will rank on Google for time lapse photography. How to do time lapse photography. This massive post is the kind of stuff that will actually um, rank and actually work. So you can see he's actually outsourcing this content. So that's not Josh didn't write this. So he's hiring this out, but like he hired out a book. Like if I was going to pay for this, I would expect this to cost $800 for this blog post to be written. Because if I'm going to do it at this level, I'm hiring an absolute expert who also happens to be a writer and the amount of detail and time to write this. I just know this is a 40 to 60 out, right? This is, this is going to take a week from someone who's actually good at this to put this content together, to put it down. But so this ranks on YouTube, on Google, excuse me. And then it, promotes his actual product, which he doesn't even have that at the bottom, which is amazing to me. Um, so if you think about it, if you were an affiliate for a, a photography course, like this is the kind of content you would need to create that will rank, that will drive traffic. You actually need to teach them. 
right? You actually, everyone we've looked at from the magician to the woodworker, to the iPhone photography, to this photography, to the knitting person, she got free knitting uh, templates, right? Everyone we've looked at in this day is actually giving value, right? The dad's guide to Disney world. He actually gives the value, right? Like the vegan coach is literally teaching it travel fashion girl. She gives like, here's the packing list for Europe in the spring. Here's the packing list for Thailand in the rainy season, right? Um, I think it makes sense. Is this making sense? Y'all I'm gonna hop over to the comments. We're going to hang out for a quick minute before I, uh, go make lunch. I think it's about that time. So let me switch over here and present to everyone. And nope, stop. Yeah, that was it. Are you back? Am I back? Are we back? Whew. How'd you do? Did you make it to the end? Like, did that actually did that actually work? Are we um know what you thought about this? Um oh that's awesome. Tiger's on. What's up, mate? Um if you were reviewing that site, Miles, you would shred horrible navigation just because the show. Yeah, this was i think you're right, Tiger. And I think that's so important is like no one has it figured out, right? Like one thing I've known and I've, so I've shared again, multiple of those sites are making seven figures a year. Many multiples of those sites are making like multiple six figures. So like between 300 and $700,000 a year. Um, I would, I would say possibly as many as half are doing that kind of revenue. Um, they all have just absolute glaring issues, glaring issues. My site, go look at my site, glaring issues. Melanie site, there's issue, right? Like there is no perfect. There is no done. It is always evolving. We're all just doing the best we can. We're moving forward in as many directions as we can. It's it's best when we go one level above tactics to where we've got at least a strategy, right? My strategy is, or my, my philosophy is to be the most helpful internet marketer in the world. My strategy is three videos per week, a podcast and my blog content. My tactics are live videos like this, right? So it's best when we nest those to where the tactic is actually based on the strategy is actually based on the guiding philosophy. But all of us are kind of down here in these random tactics, and we get all these different things going. And we forget to go stitch things back together that connect like the girl who's using on the knitting site, she's linking people over to a paid product. She's got 20 words of content on there. Maybe she's ranking today, but somebody could easily go create a 300 word post and outrank her and take over that search engine spot. But she's in such a unique niche of knitting and artwork that nobody's even thinking about it, right? And no one's like, I don't care about knitting for artwork, right? So she's found that little intersection that no one else is thinking about. So she's able to just go forth and dominate. The iPhone photography guy, I guarantee you at this point, there's several people mimicking him and doing the iPhone photography thing. He was one of the first movers in that area for sure. But now he's built up so many massive, massive, massive blog posts. It would be really difficult to dethrone him, right? That's where I'm at with my blog content. I got people like Neil Patel. I got these people who've been putting out these huge blog posts. They're not writing them. They're, they're paying thousands and thousands of dollars a month to have these massive posts created. It's a lot of effort to dethrone them. So it's a three year, five year plan that I'm on and I'm doing the best I can. And every once in a while I go look at my stuff and I'm like, oh my God, that's not linked to that. And that should be touching that. And that should be connected over there. And I jump in and fiddle with it as best I can. And then I forget about it for three, six months. And all of a sudden it's like, holy crap, I got a bunch of issues going on again. Um, Gamar, I'm glad you enjoyed that. Cool, I'm glad you enjoyed that. Um, so Mark, hey, what kind of content would you suggest for a site that sells its own greeting cards? I, what what are people searching for? So what kind of cards are they? Are they searching for unique cards, like um, Talk Like a Pirate Day cards, right? Is that the card? Then create content about Talk Like a Pirate Day, right? International Pie Day, right? Whatever, what is it that you're doing? Um, is it just greeting cards? Like you need a bit, Hallmark, is there send out cards is a dominant MLM in that space. Greeting card universe is a huge print on demand system that has tens of thousands of artists creating unique cards. So like greeting cards is done. What's your bit? What's that next thing below that you're going to do is, is really the, the key on that. Um, Cool. Oh man, I just I do love all the the kind words. I thank you very much. Um, I was like so interesting. So here's a little tip on the content for all the content creators out there. Um, I wanted to do a video yesterday. I just came back from Mexico a couple of nights ago. I got back at like 11:30 at night our time, which was like 1:30 uh, Mexico time. I do not stay up to those hours. I'm usually in bed by like 9:30. Um, so I yesterday I was just destroyed. Just like barely all I could do to keep my emails going and and do a little workout and a little hike. So I wanted to do a video to upload today this morning because I like to upload my videos in the morning. 
couldn't think of anything. Went to bed, kind of like, oh, I think I'll do a video about this. And woke up this morning, I was like, I don't want to do that video. And like, I don't know, what am I going to do a video on? So literally up until the walk I took, I went on a hike with my wife for a couple of mile loop. I had no clue what my video was going to be today. I did not know. And I was like, that's what I could do. I could just go review a bunch of niche sites. Then I came back, I made a cup of coffee that I'm still nursing right here. And I just was like, I need to come up with sites. So I went through a few different areas to find a wide variety of sites. People I know, people I don't know, people I kind of know um, that are doing well. All these sites were that you looked at were doing well. I was like, ah, whatever, cool. Made a little list and you could see, so I actually printed it out. So it's rare that I even have a list. So I had 11 and then I thought of two more that I hand wrote in to make it 13. Um, two ideas. No one knew how to build what they built, right? This was the pre-teaching. And then that little Venn diagram image right there was my note to draw out that intersection idea. And all of this came together in 30, 45 minutes. And I was like, screw it. I'm going live. Let's do it. I didn't email my list. I see members on here. Like y'all just happened to see somehow I was live. And this is the process. Like it wasn't, I didn't think about it. I don't, I didn't even know what I was doing this morning when I woke up, I had no idea this was gonna be my video. We're all doing the best we can in the moment with the best we've got. And we're all busy. We're all distracted. We're all doing as best we can, but we're all kind of messy on the other side as well. So I think that's a um, really, really interesting takeaway on that. Um, Andrew Kirby, what's up, man? So you're in the stoicism, but you're confused where there's no real problem solution pathway. So the, the, the idea for the, the big idea for me with stoicism is that stoicism is the solution, right? So there's other problems. And I think the problem can be um, a shitty family life, um, a lack of fulfillment in life. Depression can be one of those problems. So it's almost like finding the right solution, the right problems that you, so you found the solution first, not necessarily the problem first. And that's one of the things is, is how do you create the kinds of problem solution content that links people back to help them realize that um, a, that, that cultivating a stoic philosophy will help you improve your life in all of these different ways. So it's, it's a it's a twist on the self-help. So what I would go look at is all the self-help books that are selling wonderfully. And they've all got their bit like, um, excuse me, your life is waiting, the secret, all of these different things. So look at their bit. What is the problem? What's their angle of like, this is the problem they're solving. And then how do you make a stoic solution versus whatever the hell they're talking about? Don't even look at their solution. Look at the problem, the setup. You might be able to find that just in the uh, look inside on Amazon. Go down to the library for, uh, or even a bookshop. There are some bookstores around still. Hop in a bookstore for a day, for an afternoon. Go grab a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and just just open the books and have a notepad there. And like, okay, what is the problem this self help book goes to solve? And then get the list of problems. Then go home, search on Google, see what kinds of solutions are coming up, and then figure out how can you create the kinds of content that is problem solution that gets people down to the point of stoic philosophy is the thing. Is That's how I would approach the challenge. Um, and that's usually what I look for is a, a, um, a possible, and, and, and what I just gave you is not going to be the perfect solution as we've kind of been repeating. Um, it's just a starting point to get going, to get you in action, to get you creating content in different ways to see feedback, but then ultimately you get some sort of feedback from YouTube or uh, blog or something that's like you it just all of a sudden something clicks and you're like, oh, okay, those three posts. It took me a hundred posts to see that these three, wow, okay, so I need to do more of that. Um, so for me, uh, I, it took me about 150 videos on YouTube to really see a couple of things that that really clicked. And then I just went and did a ton more of those. And then I got to the point where I had done uh, Facebook ads is one of them. Uh, I literally got by month five, I think I was like, I, there was nothing else I could talk about in Facebook ads. I had done a complete course. Um, so then I had to go find that next thing, which meant doing a bunch of random stuff again until I saw something that clicked. And then I just went and did a, a bunch more of that. And, and it's been kind of repeating that process. Um, Desiree, any advice on spirituality, Reiki and a crystal site? You kind of dominate at quality and got first on page for crystals. That's awesome. Um, you grow organic to the post you make. Uh, dude, just like, I don't know, find affiliate programs that, that sell crystals. Uh, like Etsy has some, uh, there's some on ShareZale. They're, they're all over the place. Madagascar Minerals has an affiliate program. Um, I was just at their shop at the Tucson show, at the crystal show I went to. Like, I don't, I don't even get what, like grow audience through helpful content, offer them things they want to buy as an affiliate or create things for them to buy. Um, that's it. Um, 
Truth be told, you were scared to start a site, but now you got what to do. That's cool to hear, Twani. Um, you just got to start, right? It's an evolution. None of us knew what was where was how was. We just were like, I'm going to do this, right? And okay. And like Andrew Kirby is a great example. So Andrew has, what you got, like 9,000 subscribers. Um, he's got some videos that have done really well. He's taking action and he's still like, where is this going? And it's like, I wonder that about me and my business right now. Literally, my wife wonders that about her. She's 10 years in and we still wonder that. Like you never get to a point, like we get to, we get these phases where like, ah, I'm in the zone, I'm doing my thing. And then there's other times like, what the hell am I doing right now? Like it, it, it is a kind of a process of that for sure. Um, so Angelique, uh, thank you for the, I'm happy you find the content awesome. Uh, what industry did I come from? I'm very detailed. So, um, I don't know. I've been, I've started making money online in 2003, uh, essentially spamming MySpace with affiliate offers, which is the wrong way to go, which is why I'm pretty stern against doing things the wrong way. Um, I got into real estate. I did some real estate investing. Um, I got a, my, my college degree is literally university studies. I paid 50 grand to get a piece of paper that, that means absolutely freaking nothing. Um, I did a little time on the radio at one of my community colleges in California, and I've done everything from selling cars, a lot of customer support work, um, managed a department of 30 people and customer support once. And it's just a, just a, just a mashup of things. Uh, but my wife and I built a site. We started in 2009. We built a site up to a very, very lucrative, successful level. Um, and I started teaching what we did to grow that site for free on YouTube in 2016. And I've now done like almost 500 videos. So I think it's just, that is really, it is. I spent uh, seven years, uh, I spent, you know, actually I spent 13 years, um, making money online, uh, making money as an entrepreneur and essentially failing for like 12, uh, really clicked for a few now failed for about 10, really, really, really clicked for a few years. And then I started teaching it. So it's, it's really, I've, I've just done so many things that just don't work. Um, I kind of was born with the gift of gab. My dad's got the gift of gab and I picked up on that. I learned how he communicates and I've just, um, I just talk a lot. Like it's crazy. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Uh, cool. So sound survival tactics, never heard of them. Interesting. So you thought there would, wouldn't be a market anymore for those cameras. Like it, it the world is full of niche markets. You've never heard of the, the world is full. Like that's, that's how everyone wants super specific things to them. I've got this little list of YouTube channels that I find incredibly interesting. There's a five-year-old boy who has over a million subscribers. He makes millions of dollars a year reviewing toys. His mom just started filming him literally like he was three when they started reviewing his toys and they make millions and mil they sell they sold like a hundred and something million dollars worth of stuff like kids toys right it's insane uh, there's another dude who makes these like little models of the world um like they're little like resin like actual earthen models he's got like three hundred fifty thousand subscribers like making these random ass weird 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 things um there's just like that's where our world is today since we all have it on my phone near me um we have these devices that allow us to go down these rabbit holes of such unique things um that everyone wants super hyper specific solutions to what exactly what they're looking for we expect these insanely deep niches. Uh, I didn't show my friends who have um, fitness for dressage riding. Dressage is a type of horseback riding. It looks sports horse dance. It's like horse ballet, right? And she teaches fitness for people who ride horses like that. So it's not just horseback riding. It's not just fitness. It's not just diet. And it's not just dressage. It's that little tiny intersection of all four of them. And they are crushing it in an absolute major way. Um, another friend helps. Uh, she does uh, college shortcuts. She's crushing it, um, essentially tutoring kids and helping kids with uh, college applications, how to get into college. Because the bit is that your high school counselor is overwhelmed. There's 400 students and there's one counselor and you're never going to get the attention. Your kids never get the attention that they need. So hire us. We'll help your kid get into the college that you want so they can get into an Ivy League college or whatever. Crushing it, right? And if you think about it, her average customer comes through once, maybe twice if they have two kids and then they're gone. And there's just always this new wave of, of collegiate students. There's there's so many of these multi-million dollar businesses online that you and I have never heard of. And that was my goal with this video was to find the most unique and different things that I've never talked about to, to really show just this, this breadth and variety of things. Cause a lot of times people are like, well, all I can think of is digital marketing. I need to go teach digital marketing. Like good luck with that. Like 
good luck. I've caught lightning in a bottle with this channel and it's because I brought 13, 14 years of experience and I'm giving it all away for free. Good luck competing and monetizing. And that's not to say in a sense of um, braggadociousness, like this is an epically challenging space. But when you get into dressage for, or fitness for dressage writing or um, carry on fashion travel, or packing cubes or uh, packing list for a woman in Thailand, you know, or you get into how to crochet a betta fish, right? Like uh, what were some other ones? Um, hand, I don't even know the phrases that would be in woodworking with hand tools, right? Like how to build a bed with hand tools. Like, I guess people search shit like that. Like and that dude ranks and he dominates. Um, uh, vegan coach, right? Like how to make a vegan veggie loaf. Like, okay, somebody ranks for that phrase. Um, vegan dog food. There are people ranking and selling stuff for vegan dog food, vegan cat food, even though it pisses people off. Vegan rabbit food. We don't even need to talk about that. They eat carrots. We get that. Um, so I just I just think that's really, really interesting. Um, yeah, horrible navigate. Yeah, everybody see and like, dude, literally some of these websites make millions of dollars a year. And some of the here's a, here's an interesting one. So since I know uh, the revenue of several of them, some of the uglier ones make a lot more than some of the prettier ones. Some of the ones with some fugly na navigation and like, where am I on this page right now? What's going on here? They make a lot of money. And so many people focus on the look. I gotta get it done. Oh, my, but my, what's my theme look like? And my site doesn't look great. And I'm like, I don't even care. Content, 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 content. How can I create epic content that's gonna rank? This live video is the level of content that you have to create for your people. I don't do this every week. I can't, I don't have the time, but like my other videos, they're all just like, man, when I'm like, I'm gonna teach you how to learn SEO. I'm gonna teach you every damn thing about SEO. I know I'm gonna lay it all on the table. And that's what it takes is that level of content. And we saw it over and over, especially on the two photography websites. Like those dudes, photography is a big, 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 big niche, right? There's, there's colleges, there's art colleges that you can pay $200,000 in tuition for a four year art degree in photography. So that's the, the potential value of a customer in many senses of photography. So, and that's the competitors, right? The competition is uh, NYU art schools, photography program or some variation of that. I don't actually know anything about art schools, um, but you get what I'm saying? Like that, that is the level of competition. And you saw the detail, the, the depth, like they have table of contents. They have so much content. Those were 10, 15,000 word posts. Those could easily be eBooks, but they work a lot better for the search engines in that sense. Um, Darius, I'm glad you enjoyed that. Tiger, I'm glad you caught this one, man. Um, travel sites, I'm, I'm glad you, that, that click, the Disney da dad idea, like that dude's crushing it. That dude is doing so well. And the Disney dad, um, for those who didn't catch the beginning, he's just teaching people how to make the most out of their Disney World vacation. He loves Disney. Like, Think of the lifestyle that guy's created for himself. This is the part that so many people forget to think about is how enjoyable that dude's lifestyle is. Now, it comes with challenges. Tech, his sites go down, SSL certificates expire, plugins conflict, like shit happens. Like you build a business online, it's, it's just shit happens and the challenges never, ever, ever stop. Sites drop, all kinds of weird stuff happens. But so there's, there's no getting away from it is what I'm saying. There's no platform that's just perfect, none. They all suck in their own way. You find the one that sucks the least for you and you just stick with it so you don't go through the learning curve over and over. But like his business is, he loves Disney. He loves Disney World Parks. He like his shelves and there's videos of him online. You can see interviews of him online. Um, behind him on his bookshelf is all Disney stuff. Like he really loves Disney and Mickey and Minnie and all that weird stuff. He's just so enthralled by it. So now he writes about it. He makes videos about it. He talks about it. His life is all about that thing he loves. And he's in, he's earning so much money and he's doing so well for himself. He's providing for his family. He has complete time freedom. He has pre complete location independence. If he wants to go to Walt Disney World or, or Disneyland in, in Japan, he could take his whole family there and write off the whole thing. I don't even know if there is a Japanese one. I think there's one in Europe. He could go write a trip about it, write a trip report, vlog about it, do videos about it. He could write that whole thing off. So let's say he's at the end of the year, he's got XYZ coming in income. His CPA is like, dude, you're making too much money. You got to spend some of it before the end of the year. I've got that call. It's a brilliant call to have. The CPA is like, dude, you're about to spend, you're about to have to pay $230,000 in taxes. If you don't go spend a bunch of money on your business. 
hmm, would you like to have that problem? Because those are the types of problems that pop up for these people after they stick with it for five, six, seven, eight, nine years, and they create massive businesses. Then you're like, okay, well, what could I do? Well, I could take my whole family to Japan and Europe to go travel those ones. Yeah, let's just book all of that out on December. And that's what you end up doing between Christmas and New Year's is booking out these massive vacation business trips. That's what we'll call them business trips. So you can go see the other Disneyland's that you love. Like, oh my God, that's the life. And that's what I want for you. Right. And that's so my wife with the with the spirituality and the channeling and the meditation, and the, like we love this stuff. I meditate every day. I meditated yesterday. I'm gonna meditate today. Like we really she loves reading those books. She loves going through those courses. She loves it. We are most of our friends who we hang out and hike with or are, are in other aspects of that. And and we really are about it. I've got crystals all we just went to the the, the gem and mineral show i got crystals all over my desk literally like indigo gabbro kyanite uh amethyst uh tourmaline selenite i got another quartz there i got a selenite lamp over there like we love this stuff and all of that is tax deductible it's all business expense because she reviews it she talks about it the spiritual properties of indigo gabbro this stuff is cool it actually looks really cool online this was a really interesting find at the at the gym and mineral show um i got little opals my little uh you probably can't see the flash in my little opalo um that's a a raw opal um spirit quartz little amethyst points that are just freaking amazing so that's what i'm saying like that's what we love and like tiger's on here tiger loves golf uh he's from a golf family he teaches golf he writes about golf he loves golf he just built a new indoor golf facility in ireland crushing it and now he's crushing it online too and and the world is becoming his oyster and it takes more work now to create more freedom in the future and he's doing the work he's doing what's required i gotta call it y'all we're getting really close to that two hour mark and if it goes over two hours i lose part of the video which sucks um, I appreciate you. Thank you for joining. Um, share this video with somebody who needs to hear it. If you know somebody else, if you got a group on Facebook, if you made it to the end, grab the URL, send it out to them. Um, I appreciate you. It is a, uh, it is a Patagonia hat. I do believe I'm glad you caught that. So I appreciate it. Love you. Uh, go be of service to an audience. Do the work of giving value. Like it, it sucks. It's work. It's work. But whatever, do it for three to five years and you can create a lifestyle that will freaking amaze you. Uh, and it's worth it in the end. It's a lot of work. It's like moving a mountain with a spoon, but you can do it. Um, thank you. Appreciate you. I'll see you soon. Cheers.